Hey teachers, in this video, I'm going to show you how to access MindMup in your Google Drive. Um, we have installed MindMup here at CCS as part of your Google Workspace account. Um, in order to access it, all you need to do is to go to your Google Drive uh, using either the waffle up here in the top right hand corner, or you can go over here and to click on the new button. Uh, when you click on the new button, you won't see it here. You're going to see all of Google's built in uh, applications. But as you go down here to more, you will notice that MindMup for Google Drive is down here and we'll go ahead and we'll click on that. When we do, you may get an authentication uh, screen. You'll need to authenticate using your Google Workspace credentials and then you should be good to go. So this is a mind map that's going to be created in your Google Drive. We can go ahead and name it up here just as we do any other Google Drive file. In this case, we're just going to call this my mind map and well, let's do this right map and then obviously this is a file we will want to turn on auto save um, this does not auto save unless you turn it on um, we can also go ahead and we can publish these maps um, let's go ahead and wait for that to save if we want to publish a map uh, we can always uh, go ahead and give a uh, but these are public, they can't be deleted, and they are removed after six months. So you get some nice uh, information here in the case that you want to upgrade to a gold membership. Uh, we may do that at some point if uh, enough people are interested. Uh, but if I go ahead and click on start, I go ahead and give this a title, uh, give it a description, and then we'll give it just a URL slug. And then what will happen uh, is this should create a... Uh, publish for six months. When we do that, it's going to set up an export and then we can go ahead and we can even give an embed code. So if you want to put a mind map, say in uh, Canvas, you can do that. Um, send links to other people, uh, even share it on your social networks there. So I'm going to go ahead and click on close here. So what happens if I want to share a mind map with someone? All I need to do is to share it just as I would if I were, say, uh, to, you know, just sharing it as a plain Google Doc. So in this case, I'm going to go anyone with a link. Um, I'm going to share it with one of my students and I'm going to make them an editor to it. So I'll just go ahead and put in Ctest and at, stu at students.ccsk12. Let's try that again. One, two, dot com. There we go. That's my test student and I can give them a notification and then just go ahead and click on send. I'm not going to send that to them right now. So we'll just go ahead and click off of this. So rather than me take you through the whole process of building a mind map, I'm going to take you one to, to one that's already built and then kind of show you from there. So you can both get an idea of how a mind map is built as well as a case study. So um, that I've been doing a little bit of research here re recently uh, regarding the um, factors which affect uh, student work. So in this particular case are the characteristics of student work. So there are three characteristics that I want to examine. Um, you'll notice here that I have quantity and quality as well as originality. And we do notice that uh, these things are linked. We now have some different, um, different factors which affect these characteristics. Uh, so for instance, technology is, uh, does determine the quantity of work. Okay, so we're a, technology tends to make repetitive tasks easier. And so what I've done here is I've created a direct link and I've also noted that as being direct. Well, how do I connect a link to something? Well, let's find something that needs a link here. So skills and knowledge are probably going to be related to one another. And in this particular case, if I want to do this, I've got, if I want to connect these two together, I can click on skills. And then what I can do is to two finger click and then go ahead and connect to another node. OK, so if I do that, now you'll notice that I have my little plus sign that pops up there and I'm going to connect skills to knowledge. I think that both of these, this is a bi-directional 
uh, connection here. So skills and knowledge are going to be connected to each other. So what I can do here is just two finger click. Let's actually let's double click here. There we go. And now I can choose to put an arrow on both ends and we can say that this relationship is bi-directional. So now we have a connection here. We also know that uh, we may need um, some that we may need time to learn skills. So we can connect these two together. And in this particular case, I'm going to connect right there. I'm going to double click here and change that to bi-directional. And so we've got uh, now skills are related to both knowledge and they're related to time. And so we, as we begin to think about um, how we can both improve the quantity and the quality of our work, skills are going to be the one thing that we really need to focus on. And it may be different types of skills. We may need technology skills that we need to talk about, and we need to talk about actual um, writing skills or thinking skills so we can actually put subnodes sub off of this. Um, we may actually go out here to the side and put in another node. So what I'm going to do is just I'm going to add a let's see, let's go ahead and two finger click. Yep, we'll insert a child node off to the side right here and we'll take that child node. We'll say that there's content there. So we're going to take content. We're going to move it over is all we do is just click and drag it. And now we can go ahead and slide that to the side. And that's how we create a new node off here uh, on our chart. Um, we can also determine or we can label these nodes. And in this particular case, if I want to say this is bi-directional, um, this one right here is certainly bi-directional and it is also inverse. So if I go here, double click, I can label that line and I'm going to say that this relationship is inverse. And the reason being is because as quantity goes up, typically quality of work will go down and vice versa. If quality of the work goes up, then the quantity of the work that the student is going to be able to produce is probably going to go down. So this kind of tells me not just only the fact that these two are related, that is it tells me the nature of that relationship. And that's how I label that. So how do we um, how do we change uh, the, any of these nodes? For instance, if I've got a node right here that I want to increase the size of, I can just double click that node. Actually, let me go over here. I need to two finger click on it. Let me escape. Let's try that again and escape again. There we go. So now I can go up here and I can click on node style. So I can click either the, you know, change the font, the text size. I can change the font, the border. Um, in this particular case, I'm going to take my text, text size up just a little bit and then go ahead and click on OK. Now you'll notice that my skills are a little bit bigger. Um, I can change the background on any of these. So if I've got content right here, I can go up here, change the node style, and I'm going to change the color uh, of that to be, for instance, the background. We may just want to change that. I don't know. Let's change it to uh, something that's not too in your face. We'll change it to orange right there. That's pretty bright. But anyway, you can get an idea of how um, yeah, how color can code things. You can actually, if you wanted to, you could go out here and you could put color codes and and to help the viewer kind of see what it is that you're seeing. Um, there's other ways we can actually attach files to each of these nodes. So for instance, you may have a piece of research that you would like to attach here. So for technology, if I had, if I wanted to attach notes or, you know, that may have links in them, or maybe I've got a file in my Google drive, I would just click right there and then find a particular file. And then I can connect that file uh, and, whenever the uh, viewer clicks on that file, then it will actually um, take them to the file in the Google Drive. Um, we can zoom in and out up here. So this gives us some, uh, but we can recenter our view. Um, that's gonna actually carry me to where the center of the view is. 
Um, anyway, yeah, lots of different things that we can do in here. I do encourage you to get in here and do play to play around with it. Um, once you get an idea of how you can actually use mind mapping in your professional world, then you may want to show your students how they can use it, whether it's in uh, perhaps history uh, timelines or cause and effect, or you may uh, use this to do cause and effect for um, but natural phenomena in any of your science classes. Um, this can actually be a writing aid for you. So pretty much any subject area can make good use of mind mapping. So I hope that this has helped you out. If you have any further questions about how this app can be used or how mind mapping can be used in your classroom, this is something that I would love to be able to come in and help you maybe help model it for your students. And then uh, hopefully you can take off with this and help your students to grow uh, in their use of this tool. If you have any further questions about this, please come see me in the Learning Commons or come uh, or email me at jbar at ccsk12.com.